Hey, up. Right, I woke up at four o'clock this morning with my blood boiling. Um, there was a video posted by the Telegraph newspaper here on YouTube entitled Motorcyclist Rams Just Stop Oil Protesters. Now, this is quite typical of the Telegraph. It didn't ram anybody. The protesters who supposedly are continuing a slow walk actually stopped to create a more effective barrier. And he stopped too. But he was persistent. So one of the protesters marched over to him and physically tried to restrain him, which constitutes a common assault. Now, if you remember last week, I reported that a driver was actually arrested and charged with common assault for trying to move protesters off the road. Now, playing devil's advocate, um, my defence in a situation like that would be I continued on my journey, I continued to push through because having been assaulted and surrounded by these people, I feared for my safety. And that was the only way that I could escape. I'll leave a link to this video in the video description down below so that you can see it in its full context. But it's the hypocrisy of this that really wound me up. Now, I'm not going to condone what the motorcyclist did. It's not how I would have dealt with it. I'll explain how I would have dealt with it in a moment. But if he ever turned up on my doorstep, I would be very quick to get him a nice cold beer out of the fridge. Like I said, it was the hypocrisy of this incident and the way that the mainstream media reported it that really wound me up. Last week, the same media outlets made a big thing of a violent motorist who was pushing these protesters off the road. This week, they're putting a totally different spin on what is in actual fact a very similar occurrence. These protesters promote themselves as a non-violent organisation. But those protesters stopped provocatively in order to halt his progress absolutely. And then it matters not that it was apparently an elderly female that grabbed hold of him. She committed a common assault upon him. For the con in this context, that is an act of violence. Yet, in all the reports that I've read and seen on this particular incident this morning, no one is talking about that. They're all making the motorcyclist out to be the ogre for simply trying to make progress to get to work. And I personally am sick to the back teeth of this. Now, early this morning on about my third cup of coffee, I came up with an idea. People are always asking me in these sort of videos, yeah, but Stuart, what can we do? If you write to your MP, they don't do anything. There's nothing we can do, and I agree with you. This is the whole thing about this ideology. It's making the masses, the people that really matter, powerless. While these ridiculous doomsday cults get away with this madness day after day, now, the other thing that was bothering me, sort of rattling around in my head when I woke up this morning, was uh, a report about um, Dale Vince, the owner of Ecotricity. Now, I don't know whether you've seen this guy on TV. He does the occasional interview. His mannerisms, his general behaviour is narcissistic. It's just like watching another version of Sadiq Khan. They are almost identical personalities. Now, he says that he's, um, you know, worried about climate change and the planet and, you know, he's funding some of these organisations, Just Stop Oil being one of them, to save the planet. I mean, I, I don't believe that for a moment. His entire business model with Ecotricity is to make as much money as he possibly can from net zero policies. So, during the pandemic, he gave rather a lot of money to Just Stop Oil. He gave over a million pounds to the Labour Party, including a £10,000 donation personally to Angela Rayner. And, of course, uh, a couple of days ago, 
Keir Starmer, the leader of the Labour Party, vowed that he was going to give Just Stop Oil exactly what they wanted and stop the applications for licences to uh, drill for oil and gas. Basically, he's bought the Labour Party. Now, actually, that isn't what's wound me up. What has wound me up is that during the pandemic, he claimed over £300,000 in furlough money to keep his business going and then gave that money to just stop oil and to the Labour Party. Public money, taxpayers' money. Now, there have been calls for him to pay it back, but he's a cocky piece of work and he's actually said that he's got no intention of giving that money back. In fact, he's going to increase his donations to those organisations. These organisations who are trying to put paid to our freedom to travel, our freedom to choose what form of transport we use. Make no mistake, he's funding these organisations because he's going to make profit out of our suffering in the future. Now, I'm going to pitch you an idea of what we can do, a way of making our voices heard. You might think it's silly, but hear me out. Now, our politicians, our current government, and the government in waiting, the Labour Party, all believe that the way forward is to stop us travelling around like the parasites we are, and funnel us all into the dirty, polluted atmosphere of public transport. Or, if we can afford it, make us use electric vehicles. And it doesn't stop there. You know, they've got numerous extreme green agendas which will make our lives colder, more expensive, and generally more unpleasant than the lives we enjoy now. And they seem oblivious to the fact that we don't want it. So we need to find a way to protest peacefully in a way that doesn't affect other people's lives. It's not disruptive, but it sends a clear, unmistakable message to politicians, MPs and policymakers, not just here in the UK, but in any country that has been affected by these ridiculous agendas. And I'm hoping that um, the title of this video will have provoked Jeff from Jeff Buys Cars to watch this video and that he might be able to help us get the word out further because his following on this subject is far larger than mine. Now, ever since I was a youth, the colour green has been used as a symbol of hope, uh, a symbol of the environment, protecting the environment and the ecology. A virtuous colour that has been used numerous times for virtuous causes. But the word green for me now has become a dirty word. It's been overused and it's been perverted into something completely different. A, a method of controlling people. Not just their actions, but the way they think as well. In fact, the word greenwashing is being used um, quite commonly nowadays as a term for describing the use of the green agenda to mislead people. There was a certain regime in Western Europe in the 1930s after the First World War that took, I think it was a Greek symbol of peace, and they turned it on its side to emblemize the disruption of peace in Europe. You all know what I'm talking about. It's probably one of the most iconic symbols of evil this world has ever seen. And something has happened to the colour green that is very similar. It's been changed from a symbol of peace, hope and ecology to an emblem of mind control. The way I see it, the, the colour green, the word green, has been perverted from a symbol of peace to a symbol of oppression. And it's happening all over the world. It's not just here in the UK. Now, there's an expression in the English language. I presume there's probably something similar in other languages as well. 
it is actually in the English dictionary and it goes something like the worm has turned or the worm is turning and it's a phrase used to describe someone who has suffered bullying and oppression long term. Someone considered to be an insignificant worm who has finally had enough and they've started to stand up for themselves. The worm has turned. So here's my idea, and I should make it clear that this is, strictly speaking, not totally my idea. Some months ago, someone contacted me, and I can't remember whether it was in the comments section or by email, and they were a member of some motoring organisation who had come up with this idea of putting orange stickers in the back of cars to symbolise, you know, malcontent towards what the government is doing to transport. Now, I never got back to them, and then, you know, when it came to sort of replying to them, I couldn't find the email or message or comment or whatever it was. I do apologise for that. But the problem that I had with that idea is just, you know, an orange circle or whatever on the back of a car or on the back of a motorcyclist helmet. It, it could mean anything it had no context and i have kept my eyes open and i've not seen anyone displaying uh, an orange sticker in the back of the car or on the back of the bike since so obviously it didn't take off so something that anybody can do you don't have to send away for it or buy it from anywhere a green light green sticker it can be square it can be circular it can be any shape you like with a simple stylized drawing of a worm on it. Now, if you're a car driver, simply a light green piece of paper or cardboard with, you know, this emblem drawn on it, placed in your rear windscreen, uh, stuck on with a bit of sellotape or whatever, obviously in a way that doesn't obscure your rear view. If you're a motorcyclist, it's a little bit more difficult. I would suggest a light green piece of sticky back vinyl and then use an indelible marker to draw this design on it. And either stick it on the back of your helmet or on your top box. Now, it's best if these signs are rearward facing, because they're going to be seen by more people that way. Now, don't misconstrue what I'm saying here. I care about this planet, and I certainly believe we should do as much as we can to safeguard it. But the turning worm on a green background sends a message, and the message is this. Any politician or policy maker that continues to push the general population into these extreme green net zero agendas will not be voted back into office by the owner of the vehicle that is displaying that sticker or sign. Furthermore, their vote will be given to a party or individual that promises to reverse these ridiculous policies, no matter how ill-advised that might be. And they can take that to mean, you know, forcing us into electric cars, forcing ULES zones and low traffic zones on people living in cities, failing to protect people from extremist groups in the name of net zero and the green agenda it's our way of telling them that we have had enough and it's time for it to stop or they will lose power they work for us now this has to be a numbers game we have to have this sign in every single car window on the back of every helmet where possible so share the hell out of this video it's a peaceful, benign protest that sends a powerful message. If you feel so inclined, take a photograph of your sticker or sign, send it to your local MP and explain to him what it means. The more of these that they see in car windows, shop windows, on the back of motorcycle helmets, the more they will realise that they are in a precarious position if they continue down the route that they're going down. It's the only way to let our voices be heard peacefully and without force. It doesn't harm anyone. It doesn't disrupt anyone else's life. 
but it gets a clear message out. Now, to any other channel that might watch this video, including Jeff, please publish a similar video with this idea. I'm not making this video to gain any form of notoriety. I certainly don't want to administer this campaign. I'm just putting the idea forward and hopefully it's something that can take on a life of its own. It's something that anybody can easily do, either for free or for a few pence, that will take just five minutes of your time. And if we have enough numbers, it'll be far more powerful than any email to your MP. This might not be the best idea in the world. I appreciate that. that there's times while I've been making this video, I keep thinking to myself, God, this is silly. What am I doing? But... People in the comments section keep saying, look, Stuart, you know, you keep complaining about this, but what can we do? There's nothing we can do. This is the only thing I can think of until someone else comes up with a better idea. This is, if you like, democracy. It's a statement of intention to cashed up businesses with hidden agendas and virtue signalling politicians. A statement that we won't continue to watch them ruin our country and our lives. Let's make a move to take back control from this tyranny. Now, before I go, I would like, if I can, just to give a little bit of advice for motorcyclists. If you sort of get caught up in one of these demonstrations uh, run by these climate doomsday cults. Now, I suppose for the moment, this sort of advice really uh, applies to people that live down there in that London, but I think as time goes on, if a stop isn't put to these people, it's going to spread all over the country. In fact, we know it's spreading in other countries as well. Here's what I advise you to do. If you can safely do so, filter through the traffic until you get to the front of the traffic between the traffic and the demonstrators. Then pull your motorcycle over to the cab edge, switch off your engine, dismount, and push your bike up onto the pavement. Then, briskly, push the bike past the demonstrators till you're in front of them, get well ahead, manoeuvre your bike back onto the road, get back on it, start it up, and go to work. Don't, for God's sake, ride on the pavement. If you are pushing a motorcycle on the pavement, you are just a pedestrian pushing a motorcycle, and you're perfectly entitled to be there doing that. Now, this is likely to annoy the protesters. Um, it's certainly getting around their protest peacefully, but don't engage with them if they approach you. They've got a choice. They either ignore you and let you through because you're legitimately walking past them, or they have to speed up their rolling blockade to try and head you off, which is going to help everybody else because it's going to speed the traffic up. Either way, it should thwart them. I'll leave it to your discretion. Right, once again, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and my other videos, and in doing so, helping to support this channel. You can also support this channel by leaving a like and subscribing if you're not already a subscriber. And if you do subscribe, please hit the notification bell and ensure that your notifications are enabled. That way YouTube, hopefully, might let you know whenever I upload a new video. But can I appeal to you, please, you know, even if you don't like sharing videos, please share this one. Get the word out. Let's make our voices heard. Right, I will, of course, be back on Friday. So until then, please, ride safely, and I'll see you soon.